Tumba here, Dinky Doodle Designs, and let's take a look at how to set up the perfect workspace for airbrushing. So, most of you guys at home probably haven't got a state-of-the-art studio that you just use for your cakes. Crikey, I wish I had too, but most of my airbrushing is actually done in the family kitchen. So, I'm trying to contain the mess. Now, I know loads of you at home are saying to me that airbrushing is so messy, it gets absolutely everywhere. And it does if you're not aiming in the right direction, but setting up a great workspace can also really help where your colour ends up too. Now, at home, I have my kitchen hob here, and above it, of course, is an extractor hood. So this is where I do most of my work. You'll find that a lot of people like to put an airbrush box in, just a cardboard box that they've sanitaped at the corners. But actually, no. It's probably one of the worst things that you can do to airbrush into. What happens when you airbrush in this space is that all of the mist of colour that you think is going over the rest of the room and that's what you're trying to stop is actually going round and round this box and it will settle on every part of your cake not just the bit that you wanted to get covered. So actually, a box, unless it has an extractor and it is a serious piece of kit, has a proper airbrushing booth, is just not worth doing. So, what I do instead is this. I have these foam core boards. Now they could be foam core, they could be spare bits of cardboard, they could be MDF, anything really that you want to use. Now I use these for photographing my cakes and then when I've marked them or damaged them, they then become my airbrush boards. Now I've got to take my griddle piece off there just so that I've got a flat surface and I can put one board straight down and now I've got a surface to work on. Now I don't have tiles all the way at the back, so if I had tiles like this, grout folks does not wipe clean. Tiles, yes, grout not so much. So this area here I know is completely wipeable, but if you'd got tiles and grout or wanted to further protect your work behind, then a second board like so. Now if you really want to protect everything, you could also look at putting another board just here and one down the other side too. I can then switch on my light also switch on my extractor and I've created a much larger area where actually things are being sucked up into there. Now don't forget, it's probably going to dirty up your filters over time so you will need to take those out and wash them. That might save washing the rest of the kitchen down whilst you're at it. So, I've just taken this board down here and this is my normal basic workspace. So if I wanted to keep this board clean, I can. Just by adding some leftover wrapping paper. Now how many of us buy far too much wrapping paper at Christmas and birthdays and we've got stacks and stacks of it left? Just take a piece of the wrapping paper, put it white side up, and I can now use that to spray on to check my color, look at what, I, what the tone is when I'm mixing my colors, and then I can either save that piece as a note, slot it in a folder to tell me what colours it was that I liked, or simply get rid of that in the recycling once I've finished and made a mess of it. The other essential piece of kit is a turntable, and I like to use it in order that I can place my project on there and be able to turn it around. That allows me to get a great even colour when I'm trying to full colour a cake. So, turntable, perfect for airbrushing, but to keep it clean. Now I don't know about you, but one wake I might be airbrushing, the next I'm making a wedding cake. So I'm gonna cover it with a shower cap. The shower cap means that anything I'm touching around this part is actually going on the plastic and not on there, particularly the black that you can't actually see is coated in color. It will protect that nice, perfect white wedding cake that you're gonna make next week. If you haven't got a shower cap, a carrier bag will do, but seeing as I travel lots and I use lots of hotels, I'm often on the lookout for free shower caps in hotel rooms. So that's a really great must. The next thing that I would have by my side 
is of course my airbrushes and airbrush kit. So my airbrush kit, I'll have plugged into one side. If you need to, add an extension cable, but this is now close access just to my left, because I'm left-handed, that I can access stuff easily. The reason that I use more than one pen is that either I've got different colors in them, or actually I've got a spare one on hand just to switch out should I have any issues. The next thing then is colors. Now all of my colors live in a little box like this. Could be a shoe box, you don't have to go out and buy anything special. But by having all of my colors in here means that they don't tip over. Spilled colors means spoiled work. It also allows me to open all of my colors first before I get anywhere near my project. You see these little bottles with this flip top lid can be known to spit and if you do that near a mid finished project you'll have spoiled it. The other thing I have on hand is a little bottle filled with water. Now that's for my cleaning my airbrushes and rinsing out in between. This is an old bottle from a different bottle of colour that has a nice handy spout on the top so I kept it. You could, when you've rinsed through one of these, just save it and again use it for your mixed colours that you make yourself or just for your water or clear alcohol. So a little box for colours is a real must. The next thing I would have is my cleaning station. Again, for getting rid of any colours or when I'm rinsing through with water, I would just pop it in here and it saves the mess going anywhere else in the room. The next thing you'll need is kitchen roll. Now, I eat shares in this stuff because I go through heaps of it, but I use it all the time. I use it for checking my colour, gaining control, am I doing the right thing before I go on to my project? I also need it when I'm cleaning my airbrush as I block the end of it, pull back the trigger to blow my bubbles. So without kitchen roll, I just can't start airbrushing. So that's really about it. We've got our workspace cordoned off and hopefully you're gonna contain that mess. We've got a light above us so we can see what we're doing and an extractor to take anything else. Our colors, our station, our equipment, our kitchen roll, and of course our turntable with its cover to protect it. I think that's it and you're now ready to airbrush. Mm -hmm.